Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope.
in Christ's name. This next psalm, I have a, a scripture I just want to share with you. Um, I was reading this this morning, kind of by accident, um, Isaiah 40, and verse 29 and through 31, it says, He gives strength to the weary, and to the one who lacks, might he increase, his lacks might, he increases power. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And you know, we've heard that verse 31 so much that I sometimes think we don't stop to understand the depth of the verse. Because it's if, if you've been a Christian for a little while, you've heard this verse spoken. But, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And in another, in another uh, translation, it says, they that hope in the Lord, upon the Lord. But when I looked it up, I looked up that word because I had seen it as hope and as wait. It says to look for, to hope and to expect. They that wait, look for, hope, expect. He shall renew their strength. And I think oftentimes we see those that wait. And we, we have an image of us with our hands crossed and we're just waiting. We're just waiting on you, Lord. We're just waiting on you. And we got our hands crossed and we're just, we're just standing in silence and we're waiting. But listen, it's more to it. It's to look for those that look for, those that hope for, those that ex expect that he shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. There is an aspect of... We have a part to play. And I think sometimes we expect the Lord to renew us and refresh us, and we stand here, but he's saying that look for me, those that expect me, those that are putting their hope and their faith in me, those are the ones that are going to get renewed. It's active. It's an active verse. And so right now, that's what I want us to do. I want us to look for, hope for, put our expectation in Him so that He can renew our strength. Amen. Lord, we just give you this time right now, Father. We do expect, we hope for, we look for you today, Father. We look for you with all of our hearts, Lord. Make us hungry when we're not hungry. But Father God, I pray that we would hope for, believe in, trust in you, Father. And that you, you renew and that you strengthen us, Lord. He's here to do just that. You didn't come here to sing three songs and to hear a message and to go home. You came here to be touched by the Spirit of God. Amen? Is that why you came? Yes. To be touched by the Spirit of God. 
listen, if that's not why you came, maybe you came out of drudgery. Maybe somebody drug you here. Position your heart right now. You say, Lord, I'm here. I'm expecting, I'm hoping, I'm trusting, I'm believing for you to move in my life. Amen.
of this. You've never trusted him for anything before. Trust him right now. Trust him right this very minute for something. Watch him come through. Watch him come through in his time. If you'll just put your trust and your faith in him. It might not be exactly how you had it planned. It might not look exactly what you thought it would look like. But he's got it. He's got it. Amen. Trust him this morning. He is a way maker when it looks like there is absolutely no way. If you feel like you have absolutely no way out in some situation or in some circumstance, put your hope and your faith in him this morning and watch what he does. Amen. down there worshiping earlier, and I really feel like the Lord said to me, there's somebody here today that's been walking along, and life felt like everything was fine, everything was good, and it's felt like somebody put the light switch out, just turned out a light, but you don't know what's going on, why things are happening, you felt like you were in control, and now things are beyond your control. If you're his... He's got you. You may not see it. You may not understand. He is your light. He is your light. The Bible says, is there any among you who walks in darkness and has no light? It said, let him trust in the Lord and rely upon his God. Now, I know you've heard me say that scripture before, but that's a life scripture for me, and there's a reason. <clears throat> that scripture talks about when you've done everything that you know to do, you obey the voice of his servant, you've done everything you know to do and you're in a situation where you have no revelation, where you don't understand what's happening, why it's happening. In those situations, you can't trust in a job, you can't trust in a company, you can't trust in people, you can't trust. The only one you can trust in in a situation like that, his name is God, his name is Jesus. And the Bible says we can trust in his name. That's his character. He's good. He's for you. He's not against you. He's not evil. He's good. That's his character. In the scripture, a person's name represents their character. God is good. That's the foundation for everything. It says you can rely upon your God. That literally means you can prop yourself up on like a crutch. Literally. It literally means when you're in a place of struggle, when you're in a place of pain, when you're in a place where you just can't go anymore, he is a crutch for you. I know I've said this. People have said Christianity is just a crutch for weak-minded individuals. Okay, as long as I can prop myself up on Jesus, whatever you want to think is what you think. But he's got you. And if you're that person that's walking in that place where you don't understand what's up right now, I encourage you to put your trust in Jesus. Not just for your salvation, but for your life, for your walk. Lord Jesus, we love you and we honor you in this place. Jesus, we trust you because you are trustworthy. Jesus, we rely upon you because you are the rock on which we stand. Jesus, we build our world on you because when the storms come and the winds rage, and they will, we can stand because what we're built on. Jesus, we love you and we honor you here in this place. Lord, today we remind ourselves that you are a good God. We remind ourselves that you are a firm foundation. We remind ourselves that your arm is not too short, that you can't reach down and deliver. You are not powerless and you are not helpless even in the world that we live in. Jesus, we honor you. We worship you here. We bless your name, Lord.
Spirit of God, thank you that you are here. Spirit of Jesus, thank you that you're here in this place. Change every heart. Change every mind. Remove a heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Give us a new name on a white stone that only you know. Jesus, we love you. Lord, let today be a day of demarcation, a day that changes things, a day that we see things differently, a day that we understand things differently, a day of revelation. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Welcome to Connect Church. Before you completely sit down and get comfortable, why don't you turn to somebody and welcome them to Connect Church. Let them know you're glad they're here. If you're visiting with us today, welcome to Connect Church. If you're visiting with us online, welcome. We're so glad you're with us. God bless you. Good morning, Connect Church. Good morning, Connect Church. It's good to see everybody today. Let's go ahead and find our seats. We can release children. If you have any children elementary school age, they're welcome to go ahead on back to our kids' church. Good morning, y'all. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's definitely this area. I think left church is friendlier. I'm not going to lie. I definitely think Left Church is friendlier. Well, what's up, guys? It's good to see you here this morning. We have an, yeah, we have an awesome service planned with Pastor Bill Ligon here to guest speak for us today. Let's give it up. So we're so excited. We do have three verbal announcements for you. So our first one is Connect Groups. That's going to be happening on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. with child care uh, provided on site for us. Hey, guys, can we get some music in the back room? A little music. <laughs> Acapella. So if you see up here, if you're craving community, if you haven't been able to get together with your friends recently, haven't been able to build relationships recently, this is a great opportunity for you. There it is. This is a great opportunity to build those relationships, to continue growing, and to continue discovering what the Lord has for you in this and the next season. So we're so excited to announce that. Beloved ladies in the Forge Men are still happening every Wednesday, and it's not too late to join those groups. Even if you didn't join from the beginning, we're speaking on the believer's authority. So I would really encourage you to get connected into community, okay? So our next announcement is our Connect Kids Fun Run, okay? So our Connect Kids Fun Run, they're on 8 a.m. Uh, they're at 8 a.m. every Saturday. Uh, for kids ages 7 to 15. So if you have a neighbor kid who just like walks around the neighborhood, they don't have anything to do this summer, summer's out, feel free to bring them along with your kids to our Connect Kids Fun Run. We have a few more events happening before our official event, okay? And then our last and uh, final thing that we're going to talk about today is giving. Giving, we believe, is an act of worship. And it's one of the ways we honor the Lord 
here at Connect Church. Now we have a new feature and this has been tested, so it works. If you don't have the app on your phone, you can open up your camera, scan that QR code and it'll take you right to the download page where you can, that's what I'm saying, where you can determine whether you wanna download your Apple Store app or your Samsung app, okay? So let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and pray over the offering, okay? Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you with our giving. Father, thank you that you bless us to bless others, Father. I pray that opportunities would be presented for this church, Father, for the people in this church to continue to contribute, Father, continue to support our local community and outreach and missions, Father. Thank you so much that you've provided opportunities for us to be your hands and feet, Father. Bless what comes in, Father. Multiply it, Father, and bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Kelly for some introductions, all right? Yeah. Happy Sunday, guys. Thank you. All right, good morning, good morning. All right, here's the deal. <clears throat> I can't even say this without smiling. If you're glad that Jesus gave me an opportunity in ministry, you can thank this man right here. If you blame Jesus for giving me an opportunity in ministry, you can blame this man right here. Pastor Ligon, I grew up at Christian New Church in Brunswick, Georgia. I had the privilege of doing that with my family. And uh, Pastor Ligon is my pastor. Uh, I have a real quick story to tell. Here's, here's how you know he's your pastor. I went into surgery probably, I guess it's probably 10 years ago. And I, you know, I don't like to tell folk when stuff, you know, I'm just some kind of private about stuff like that. So anyway, I go into surgery for gallbladder surgery and this takes longer than what it's supposed to. So I'm in surgery and I'm, you know, just Marsh and I, just, you know, nobody else there, but that's kind of how I wanted it. So I woke up in recovery and I looked down at the foot of the bed and Pastor Lincoln's standing there. I don't even know how he knows I'm in surgery, but he knows. And so he's standing there, and I open my eyes, and I'm still under anesthesia, and I looked at Marsh, and I said, am I dying? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all brought in the big guns. And so I just, uh, I just want you to know that we love this man. We honor this man. And a lot of what is in the foundation of Connect Church came right out of the heart of this man right here. And so just... Just honor him and love him and, and appreciate and value him for the gift that he is to the kingdom. What he's going to share will change your life. Just honor him as he comes. I love you. Well, I'm so blessed to be here. Yeah. My son John is too. And to be here with your precious pastor and his wife, these two pastors whom we love dearly. I've known them all, my li all their life. My goodness, not all my life, but all their life. Because <laughs> I'm about four times older than they, I think. <laughs> this Wednesday I'll be hitting 91, you know. After service, if any of you men want to arm wrestle, I'd be happy to arm wrestle with you. All right, no? You turn me down? Most of them do, but what a joy to be here with this precious couple and uh, with, them, with my son, John. It's been a great honor and a privilege to serve the Lord. In July, I'll start my 68th year in ministry. Oh, my goodness, what a great joy and privilege and what an opportunity to share with you something that God put on my heart that was so precious. It's been a great honor to also be a part of raising up pastors, not only in this country, but in, we were missionaries for six years in Spain. I ended up teaching in the seminary in Barcelona and raising up young pastors to send them around the nation. What a joy it was and what a privilege to be able to be here today to share with you what God put on my heart a number of years ago, 1973. 
I had ended up coming back from Spain. I was pastoring. At that time, I was still a Southern Baptist pastor. And I was pastoring a, a large Southern Baptist church, and a man in the church turned against me and uh, worked hard to try to get me out. And he found out that uh, because I'd been baptized in the Holy Spirit that he could use that against me. And so he got 10 couples to work to do that. And they rose up against me in the church. The church was about 2,000 members, rose up against me. And uh, so I went away and prayed. I said, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord said, come back home, release the church, and speak blessing over the people. So I concluded a Sunday morning with a blessing service over the people. It's amazing what God did. And right after that, God began to send people. I just stepped away. God began to send people from all over the place, from several counties around. And we began new ministries and new work, not only in Brunswick, but on St. Simon's Island and in other places. And what a joy it is to be here with one of God's choice men and his wife and see what God is doing here with you. Isn't that awesome? It's wonderful. I want to share with you what God showed me that is so critical and so important in life so that you can have a healthy, wholesome life and live to the age that God wants you to live. You ready to do that? To be strong and healthy. St. Augustine, one of the early church fathers, said this. He said, as light is greater than darkness, so good is greater than evil. As light is greater than darkness, so good is greater than evil. Now, um, right now it's a little light in here. Where is your dark switch? Uh, Is it a dark switch over here? Do Do you all have a dark switch in here? Can I regulate the the darkness by turning on the... You don't have a dark switch? Well, how would, we re- how would we reduce the light in here? Well, you turn down the light, don't you? You turn down the light. But when you... When someone directs darkness toward you in forms of anger, resentment, rage, what do you do? If you're not careful, you've got a dark switch in your mind. And you can flip on the dark switch and turn it up. And you can come under the control of another person who has attacked you in rage. That person has attacked. I've had people say, but pastor, you don't know what they said about me. You don't know what they're doing to me. You don't know what that person's doing to me. I went home last night and I could hardly sleep. I said, oh, you could hardly sleep. That that man went home with you, huh? No, he didn't. I said, yeah, he did. You said you couldn't sleep. All you could do was thinking about him and the thing he said about you. Because you haven't learned the power of the spoken blessing. And that's why your pastor asked me to come today to talk to you about the power of the spoken blessing. Now, my wife and I are working on our 65th year together as husband and wife, okay? But ever since the Lord taught us this in 1973, every day, we did it this morning at 6.30 before I left to come down here from Georgia. We lay hands on each other and speak blessing and health and life over each other. That's God's divine plan. Now, in the Bible, there are two forms of curses. There's the curse of the law. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10, Paul writes this about the curse of the law. For as many as are under the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in this book of the law. Well, how is the curse of the law broken? There's only one way, biblically, that the curse can be broken. 
and that's the covenant blood of Jesus Christ. And it's that which God used, the blood, when he delivered the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt. He used the blood when they sacrificed the Lamb of God and took the blood and put it on the doorpost of their house. If you do not have the blood of Jesus, then you're under the curse of the law. You need to know that. You're under judgment. It's not that you will be someday. You already are. You need to be released from judgment and made whole to be God's servant. The second curse in the Bible is the verbal curse that I was talking to you about. The verbal curse can only be broken with the verbal blessing. You need to know that. When you have the verbal blessing, the verbal blessing always breaks the curse. In 1 Peter 3, 9, Peter said, For this you are called to give a blessing, that you might inherit a blessing. And that's what God showed me in 1973 when that man came against me and attacked me, that I could release and break that over him through the blessing spoken over me by the Lord himself. Now, about 20 years ago, a mother called me one day as they were in the church, very distraught. She said, Pastor, you know our son? I said, yes. She said, he just brought home his report card. He's in the seventh grade. She said, it's all F's. She said, but it's more serious than that. He failed the seventh grade last year, and he's now failing it again. We don't know what to do. I said, will you and your husband bring him and the three of you come to see me? So they made the appointment, and they came to the office. When they walked in, the father said, I hope you'll do something to help this boy. I've told him if he doesn't change, he'll always be a failure. He'll never make anything out of himself. And I said, well, you'll sit down a minute. I need to talk to you. I said, do you know that you just spoke curses over your son? I said, now, this is what I want you to do. I want you, both of you, to pray and ask God to show you the tremendous qualities that are present in your son's life, the attributes, all the things. And then every day I want you to have him kneel before you and you lay hands on him and you speak those blessings over him. May the Lord give you great success. May the Lord develop those qualities in your life. May the Lord give you the ability to understand and know how to be an overcomer. All of those things. And I said to him, I said, now, when your parents get through blessing you every day, I want you to lay hands on them and speak blessing over them to be good parents to you. And I said, I can't reach your teachers. So I'm going to write out a blessing for you for your teachers. He changed class every hour in the seventh grade. So I wrote out a blessing for him. And I said, now, I want you to memorize this. So he did. I said, now, you take this. You go tomorrow to school. And you approach, when you go into the classroom, you approach the teacher's desk. And you do like this. Teacher, may I speak to you a minute? What is it, troublemaker? I want you to know that I'm sorry for the way I've acted in your class, but you're an excellent teacher. May God raise you up to be the scar teacher in this school. May the favor of God rest upon you. May everything you do succeed. And may you be recognized to be the best teacher that this school system ever has ever had. I said, now. Get ready because the teacher may want to curse you again. You come back tomorrow afternoon and report. So he came back. They brought him back. The parents brought him back. And I said, how'd it go? He said, every teacher accepted my blessing but one. What did she say? She said, I don't believe a word you say. You're nothing but a failure. And you'll never make anything out of yourself. You'll always be a failure in your life. I don't know why you're coming here saying this to me. I said, what did you do? I said, I'm sorry for that, but you're an excellent teacher. May God raise you up to be the star teacher in this school. May the favor of God rest upon you, and may everything you do succeed. I said, what did she do? He said, she just sat there and looked at me for a minute, and then she, she said, are you serious? 
Yes, ma'am. Well, I guess we can try again. That boy finished that year with all A's and B's. Graduated from Brunswick High School with all A's and B's. And is a successful businessman in our county today. That's the man that teachers and parents were saying to him, you'll always be a failure. You'll never make anything out of yourself. Now, that's the only way you can break the spoken curse is for you to speak the blessing over those who speak curses on you. Since the spoken blessing is so powerful, we need to know what God says about it. And in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28, we find that God created Adam and Eve, and the first thing he did after he created them was to speak blessing over them. God spoke blessing over them and said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. In Genesis 9, chapter 1, he spoke blessing over Noah and did the same thing. In Genesis 12, God spoke blessing over Abraham. God has given us three foundations. I want you to see this. Three foundations upon which we can build a successful, strong life. And you can be successful in what you do. And that's what God taught me in 1973 when a man was attacking me to bring failure upon my life. He couldn't do it. I spoke blessing over him. Two years later, they found him in his front yard, face down, dead. Now, nearly 50 years later, I'm still here speaking to you. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you the power of the spoken blessing. God gave three foundations to his people. The first one was the blood covenant. The blood covenant, as I said, delivered the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt. The second one that he gave them was what we call the moral code or the Ten Commandments. Now, you need to know that there is a teaching that's going on in different places on grace and says that no longer do the Ten Commandments have anything to do in your life. They're not for you today. They're by grace. I was teaching, speaking at a conference in another city uh, several years ago, and the other speaker was a man who taught grace and the Ten Commandments are not for today. And he approached me between one session and just talked to me private, and he said, look, I need to talk to you. What is it? Why is it that you're teaching these Ten Commandments? Don't you know that they're not for today? We live by grace through faith. I said, I know. I'm saved by grace through faith. But I said, let me ask you something. He said, what? I said, can I borrow your billfold for a minute? What do you want my billfold? I said, I need some extra money, and I want to I'll take some money out of it. You take money out of my billfold? I said, well, I'd lie about it, and you wouldn't know I had it. What? You'd lie about it? I said, see that man over there? Yeah. I said, he keeps looking at your wife. Can he spend a little time alone with you? Are you crazy? That's adultery. I said, wait a minute. You're saying the Ten Commandments are not for today? And you said stealing is wrong? You said lying is wrong? And adultery is wrong? I said, have you got one of those idols in your pocket? He said, are you crazy? I said, oh, the second commandment. God said, you're not to have any idols. Why are you doing this? What, you need, what you're talking about is, a, is the laws of the scribes and Pharisees where they took the law and expanded it so far that they put people under tremendous burdens. But that precious moral code that God inscribed on two tablets of stone on top of Mount Sinai when he gave them to Moses to bring down and teach the people. Teach the people how to relate to each other and how to relate to God. Jesus said, they're summed up in this. There are two things that sum up the Ten Commandments, Jesus said. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, that's the first four. 
And he said, the sacrament is like unto it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, uh, my son John is a real estate broker and a mortgage broker, but he's written 11 children's books, and he's written on the Ten Commandments. They're absolutely beautiful, and I'm going to ask John to come up at this time and share with you something, and he's going to show you one of them because they're so, so critical, so important. I saw a man the other day who's running for a state office in our state, and he said, I, I heard about your son's books on the Ten Commandments, and he, I thought, well, how's he going to write one on, on adultery for children? And he said, then I got the book, and it's amazing what he did. So this is John. And when he was, he was 10 months old when we went to Spain as missionaries, but he grew up on me. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Well, God bless you guys. You know, we're going to spend a lot of time together, you know. We're going to live together in heaven, aren't we? But um, about 20 years ago, the Lord told me to listen and write, and I didn't know what to write because I don't have a specialty. And about six months later, he reminded me that he wanted me to listen and write. So I said, well, Lord, I'll start somewhere. I can at least start with a children's book. And so I wrote a book called The Bee and the Bear, and it was on not stealing. And out of that, the Lord uh, put the idea in my heart to write one on each of the commandments. And then later on, he, uh, I wrote a book on Jesus being the good shepherd. And I do want to encourage you about this because I struggle with the whole idea of what am I doing with this? You know, is it just a direction that I went in? But I do, I, I'm, it's settled in my heart now. And let me just ask you, does anybody know where the law is first mentioned in the Bible? I didn't know, and I looked it up. I tried to find it, and it was a surprise to me where it came about. And it's actually in Galatians, I mean, excuse me, Galatians. It's not that far back. It's in Genesis 26. And it was when God was talking to Isaac, and there was a famine in the land, and he was thinking about moving down into Egypt. And God came to him, and he, and he told him not to, to move down there, and he was going to bless him. And here's why he said he was going to bless him. I looked it up on my phone. I thought I was texting. Let's see. But I said, I'm looking up a scripture. And um, in Genesis 26, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, don't go down to Egypt. Stay in the land in which I'm telling you. Sojourn in this land. And I'll be with you and I'll bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give these lands and I will establish the oath which I swore to your father Abraham. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and will give your descendants all these lands and by your descendants the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So look at all the blessings God's talking about as he comes up to this word, the law. And he said, he said I'm going to... Uh, and your descendants and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. And he says, because. There's not too many places in the Bible where God says, I'm going to do this because something. But he said, because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And so Isaac dwelt there. So apparently the law was written on Abraham's heart and on his mind. And when you look at the new covenant, I've got the new covenant in the back of each of my little books. You'll find it in Jeremiah 31, Hebrews 8 and 10. And the first part of our new covenant that we all enjoy in Jesus is that he will write his laws on our hearts and our minds. And he'll be our God. And we'll be his people. And no longer, you know, will he remember our sins. And he'll even be merciful to our iniquities. And so that's the time of sanctification where he brings us along. Where if we stumble, we can get up 
and keep going with God. And so God redeemed us from the curse of the law. And the last thing I'll say about it is in Galatians 3, it says he placed us under the law to tutor us to faith in Christ. So this actually helps us from wandering away like sheep, each going to his own way. It kind of is like the shepherd going, all right, this way. Come on. I'm your master. These are the way to live. All right? And I'm changing you, and I'm changing your heart. So anyway, from that, I ended up writing the books, and I've got one book on Jesus. And they rhyme. They have pictures. Dad sometimes likes me to tell a story, but I... We, you want me to? Okay. So this is the second one. I'll tell you the second one. This is called The Picnic Basket. It's sunny. Oh, let me tell you this. I've got books out there. I had done some books earlier, and I'm giving them away. Not these, but the ones that are out there. And you're welcome to, to get some. And if you have other family members, as long as I have some out there, you can have them. They're free. What, what you're saying is that you wrote four of the books first. Right. And that's the ones you were selling for a long time, but now you've, you've redone them with a full set of, of all the books. And the older books are the ones that not, you're not giving these away. Right. The older books out there, you're giving them away, right? Thank you, Papa. All right. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'm doing. So, um, and these will be on sale with a special price. And next week, I'm going to print my first set. And so, if you want to buy them, there'll be a price that I'm not going to offer them at anymore. But anyway, you're welcome to that. So, it's Sunny Valley. We've got Bobby Bear, Benny B, Thurston Owl is the preacher. Uh, and we have all that. So, uh, on this one, it's a little hummingbird. And he goes, uh, says, down in Sunny Valley on the 24th of June, were two busy bird watchers hunting Hummin' Harry's tomb. There you go, Poppy. You can turn the page. One was tall and skinny, and one was short and plump. He held a long, fuzzy microphone while standing on a stump. They had the biggest big binoculars that you could ever see, looking hard for Hum and Harry, saying, where could he be? Hum and Harry snickered and was giggling with glee. Here we go. He was hiding very quietly and peeking from a tree. They brought a picnic basket that held all they brought for lunch, hot dogs and sugar cookies, chocolate pudding and cool punch. Soon came Bobby Bear, and he was sniffing all around. <laughs> and he found the watcher's basket as it lay upon the ground. Whoopee, shouted Bobby, thinking, whose could it be? Could it be the funny watchers who were watching all the trees? He said, I'll go and ask them. It could be they want to share. So he tapped one on his shoulder, and it gave them both a scare. So they tossed their big binoculars and dropped their microphone, saying, ah, a chubby bear, as they went running to their home. Harry flew to Bobby Bear to ask him, what went wrong? When you tap went on his shoulder, they said, ah, then zip, we're gone. Bobby said, it always happens, but I really don't know why. You see, I always ask politely, but they run and won't say hi. <laughs> Since they left us this big basket, we won't let it go to waste. I see hot dogs and some cookies. Would you like to have a taste? They were just about to start, but saw a hot dog leaving too. Bobby said to Hum and Harry, I don't even have a clue. So they grabbed the big binoculars and grabbed the microphone to find out about the hot dog, and they found they weren't alone. There were ants under the bun uh, that was carried off that day, and some ants beside the basket bowing low and giving praise. They were saying, oh, great basket, that brings us our tasty food. Please accept our greatest thanks. You have all our gratitude. Bobby looked at Hum and Harry, and Hum and Harry looked right back. They think a picnic basket is their God. Oh, no, that's out of whack. Don't they know that it can't hear them? Don't they know that it can't think? Don't they know it's just a basket that holds picnic food and drinks? Let's get Thurston Al to help us. He can tell us what to do. They found him hoeing in his garden, and they told him all the news. Oh, wait a sec. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a couple behind. So there's the, the picnic basket. Let's see. He said, 
Yes, they have a problem. A false idol is their God. They don't know the God who made us, so they worship something odd. God, our Father, is a spirit who speaks to us, but we can't see. He is not a picnic basket or things made by you or me. Benny B just buzzed by here, and he had a honey jug. He's the perfect one to tell them. He knows God and can speak bug. So they went to Benny B and told the story once again. Benny prayed a prayer for them. Lord, please help them. Amen. So they hurried to the basket before all the food was gone. Benny talked with his antennas to say hi and carry on. He explained about the basket, and he explained about the Lord. And he said, the Lord God loves you, but your idols he abhors. He does not like them. He said, God wants you to talk to him. He really wants your love. If you ask God to forgive you, that will please the Lord above. They believed what Benny told them, and they said, we do agree. And they asked God to forgive them as they prayed on bended knee. Soon the celebration started. They were happy as can be. Bobby Bear then grabbed a hot dog, letting out a big whoopee. Hum and Harry started humming, and soon it was a jamboree. And the ants were just a-dancing, singing to the Lord with glee. And then at the end of the books, I'll give you a little thought on it and what it means. And then we actually have the new covenant here at the end of the books. So that's what they are. And so the thing that God, that Dad's going to share with you in a minute, don't want to do a spoiler alert here, but he's going to talk to you about the blessing. And Abraham went through every stage of this because Jesus said that, that, that Abraham saw my day and he was glad. He saw the redemptive work of the cross. He understood the law and kept it. And he spoke blessing because God said he chose Abraham because he would teach his children after him. And Isaac is the one that we learn the blessing from. So we know it's true. Thank you. Oh my, they're all, they're absolutely awesome. You know, I was looking the other day in a bookstore and most of the children's books, they were demonic. And uh, it's wonderful for, to see that God has put on John's heart uh, to write these books all in rhyme, beautifully illustrated and so forth. What a great great opportunity it was. As I said to you a few moments ago, when God first created Adam and Eve, the first thing he did was speak blessing over them. And blessing was carried forward through the patriarchs, all of the patriarchs. When God put it on my heart in 1973 when that man was attacking me, I, I had a friend who was retired now. He had, when I had pastored in Valdosta before we went to the mission field, in downtown Valdosta, he was, a, he was a rabbi at the conservative uh, synagogue, and I was president of the Ministerial Association, and I invited him to come with me to meetings, and I took him. So I found him in retirement in Columbus, Georgia. And I called him. I said, Rabbi, this is Bill Ligon. He nearly started crying. He said, Pastor, I've never had a Christian pastor treat me like you have. Where are you? I said, I'm in Brunswick, Georgia. I need to come to see you. And he said, you're welcome in my home. I said, I want to talk to you about the blessing. I want you to teach me the Old Testament principles of blessing so I can understand my New Testament better. He said, you come right on. So when I got to his home, he blessed me when I arrived. He blessed me when I sat at his table to eat. He blessed me when I got up. We had more blessing. He talked me about it. And when he got through, I went home. And then I went to, to three seminaries in Atlanta, Louisville, Kentucky. have put on their lives to be set free. When Jesus began his ministry, the first thing he did when he called his 12 disciples together to train them for three years to be his apostles, 
was to speak a series of blessings over them. We find them in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 3. We call them the Beatitudes. The first one that he did, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's people who are totally surrendered to the Lord. And he said, when you experience that with my blessing, you're going to know kingdom living, the power of the kingdom, kingdom living. And then the second one, he said, blessed are they that mourn, for they should be comforted. If you exegete that in the Greek, it's a funeral word. Those who begin to grieve when they realize that their sins have offended God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit. The reason Jesus suffered so terribly and died on a cruel cross for one reason, because we sinned. That's why. And you say, Lord, I'm so sorry. I repent. Blessed are those who mourn, for they should be comforted. You look at that word comforted. It's the Greek word parakletos. And it means they'll be ministered to by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come to you and minister to you because of the power of the blessing that Jesus spoke. I'll just give you one more. I won't go over all nine of them. He said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek are not weak. The meek are people who obey the commands of Christ. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Now, my wife has a little dog. She wanted a dog several years ago, so she got the little white dog, and I got the leash. I get to take her out. But anyway, you know, if you teach her to fetch and you throw the stick and you tell her to sit and then throw the stick, if she doesn't sit, if she runs to get the stick, she's not meek because what did you tell her to do? I told her to sit. But if I say sit and throw the stick and then every muscle in her body moves, but she's not going to move until I say fetch. And then she runs to get the stick. Now she's meek. Are you meek? Do you listen to the Holy Spirit and only move when the Holy Spirit says move? And no other time? No other time. In the spring of 1971, before we came home that summer, I was planting a church in Barcelona, Spain. I was a professor in the seminary, but I was planning a church, and I had one of my students with me, and we were going from door to door inviting people to our church. But it was a Roman Catholic country under a Roman Catholic dictator, General Franco, and what we were doing was against the law. And someone called the civil guard, the Guardia Civil. And I looked, I said, Antonio, look, here comes the Guardia Civil. I wonder where they're going. Mira, aquí viene la Guardia Civil. They build, ¿a dónde van? And he said, I don't know. When they reached us in their limousine, they slammed on the brake, jumped out, grabbed us, pinned us to the concrete, and put us under arrest. But you know what? We were obeying the Holy Spirit. God turned that thing around. When they, they got us to the headquarters and a man had confiscated about 200 New Testaments we were giving out. He, he quizzed us, and then he, he came in. He said, the judge says that you can go home, but you're under city arrest. Started to walk out, and he said, just a minute. I said, yes, sir. He picked up one of my New Testaments. He said, can I have one of these? I thought, that's what he arrested me for. I said, certainly. Started to walk out, and he said, just a minute. I said, yes, sir. Can I give one to a friend of mine? Oh, my goodness. So then they sent me word the next week that I had to leave Spain. So I went to the U.S. consulate, and they let me see the consul general of the United States. The power of God, the blessing of the Lord on you. God will supernaturally take care of you. The consul general, he said, what were you doing? And I was able to witness to him and tell him about Jesus and offer him a New Testament. He said, I'm going to help you out. 
he called in his attorney. His attorney took me to his office, a Spaniard, and he said, what were you doing? And I sat in that man's luxurious office and told him about Jesus. Oh, my goodness. And I gave him a New Testament. The Lord was in control. He said, I'm going to help you out. Two or three weeks later, he called me and he said, you're all set. You can stay in the country. You're free. You have to do one thing. You have to go back to the police headquarters, and they're going to give you all your books back. So I went back to police headquarters. They had me sign for them. And then the man who arrested me stood up, and he said, on behalf of the country of Spain, we ask you an apology for any problems we've caused you. Welcome to Spain. Enjoy your time while you're here. Listen. God wants to bless you and pour his spirit out on you abundantly. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Inherit the earth? You mean God wants you to prosper? That's a part of the blessing is prosperity. Prosperity over this, this ministry here that will be debt free. Isn't that wonderful? As the blessing was spoken over the ministry in Brunswick when I retired four years ago and released it debt-free, 17 acres, debt-free, St. Simon's Island, eight acres, debt-free. That's going to happen here. Your blessing will be, and you and your life too. You won't owe anyone anything. My goodness, did you know that? God wants you blessed. He wants the anointing of the Lord on you. He wants you to prosper in all of your ways. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Everything is here for you. God's blessing and his favor upon your life. Are you ready to receive it? Why not? Yes. Now, in Luke 24, verses 50 and 51, Jesus was getting ready to ascend into heaven. And as he went up to heaven, he spoke blessing over his followers. That's what the scripture says. It says that he spoke blessing over them. Let's just look at it. Luke. And he led them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came about that while he was blessing them, he parted from them. I read that to my uh, Jewish rabbi friend when I visited with him in his home. And I said, what do you think Jesus said? And she said, he said, wasn't he a rabbi? I said, yes. That's what they said. They called him rabbi teacher. He said, then he had to be saying the high priestly blessing from Numbers chapter 6. He said, why don't you Christians do that more? Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord let the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. And then verse 27, he said, thus you shall put my name on the sons of Israel, and I then will bless them. I said, that's right. That's what he was saying. And then I was thinking, I saw a picture one time where someone drew a picture of Jesus going up to heaven and he had his hands like this, like he was going up to see his father. And I realized that's, what, that's not the way he went up. He went up like this. He was looking down as he went up. It says he blessed them. And I believe he was saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. He left them with his blessing and his favor upon their lives. And that's what God wants for you in Jesus' name. He wants you to know the power 
of the blessing in your life. Amen. Glory. Now, I've only been able to give you just a review of a lot of things because there's a lot more. I usually do uh, four sessions in a seminar on the blessing, but I've given you this today as a beginning, and I'm going to ask that we do something very special. I'm going to ask your pastors, Brother Kelly and Marcia, to come and stand right here, okay, in front of the people and turn around and face your people. Turn around and face them. Okay. Now, no, just, uh, you want to take that? No, just leave it. Uh, okay. You, you can, if you want it, you can have it. <laughs> you want the pulpit? You can have it. You going to preach down there? No. <laughs> All right, I want you to do this. Stand up with me and extend your hand toward them. And repeat after me. Say, Holy Father, we thank you for our pastors, for their lives, for their commitment to you, and the favor that you placed upon them. And now, pastors, may the Lord grant to you divine success in everything you do, favor in your lives, divine health to live long, healthy lives, the Word of God coming out of you with great anointing and great power. May you be blessed in your going and coming, your rising up and lying down. May the Lord give you the joy of seeing the church here and your ministry and your lives and the lives of all of your people here, free from debt and able to do all that God wants them to do. May the Lord bless you now and keep you Say it, everyone. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now remain standing if you would. And I'm going to ask pastors to come up here if you would with me on the stage. Right now, would you all come up with me? Amen. You want this? You can have it. <laughs> Pastor, look at your precious congregation. Aren't they precious? Sure are. They're so wonderful. I, I th think they're all ready for a blessing Absolutely. to be spoken over them. We to ask you all to speak a blessing over all of your people today. You know them. You know all of them. You know where they are. You know what their needs are. Would you all speak blessing over them now? Absolutely. Open your hands up to the Lord. Open your hands up to the Lord. <coughs> uh, your pastors. And if you all speak blessing over you. Lord, I just bless this congregation with unity. Lord, I bless them with oneness. Lord, I bless them with the ability to discern truth from lie, right from wrong. Lord, I bless them with boldness. I bless them with grace. Lord, I bless them with the ability to discern what your will is in their life and the boldness to go after it. Lord, I bless them with the ability to connect people to God, to people, and to purpose. Lord, I bless them with wisdom in business, wisdom and blessing in their family relationships. Father, I thank you for them, and we bless them now. Church, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord Jesus lift the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. Well, let's, uh, let's pray, and uh, we'll go ahead and get the worship team back up here. Here's what we're going to do. Um, you know, this, it, may, it makes a difference when you speak life and when you speak death. The Bible says life and death is in the power of your tongue. Did you know that? It makes a difference in the way you speak of your family, of the way you speak of your businesses, of the way you speak over friends and relationships. It makes a difference. And so if you, if you want to be prayed for,
Today the altars are open on both sides. If you want a blessing to be spoken over your lives, Pastor Liggins here. I'm going to ask him if he'd pray for folk. And, um, you know, I, I feel, I feel, I hope this is all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call an audible. <laughs> um, if you want your children to have a blessing spoken over their lives, why don't you go get them out of the nursery as we go into this song and bring them back in here. Go get my grandson. I can do that. I'm telling you, it makes a difference. If you want a blessing to be spoken of your kids, go get them and bring them in here, and we'll get Pastor Ligon and lay hands on them and bless them. Um, if you feel like there's something going on in your life that that you just need spoken blessings spoken over you, uh, we'll have our pastors and elders down over here. Just respond to the Lord. That's what we're really doing. Let's go ahead, Marsha. We're going to the song. What you to do now is to lay hands on your children, yourselves. Lay your hands on your own children. Come over here and get by you, baby. Lay your hands on them right now, and we're gonna. I want you to speak blessing, and then I will. If you repeat that to me, thank you, Holy Father, for my precious children. May your anointing be resting upon them forever. May they grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus, and grow to be everything you want them to be. May they be protected from all evil and harm. May they walk in your ways and obey your commands all the days of their lives. And may the Lord release his favor upon each one of them now. Now I'm going to speak blessing over you. So blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. 
You've commanded your blessing to be spoken over these children, over these parents and grandparents, that your name might be placed on them and that you would bless them. So may the favor of the Lord rest on all of you now. May the glory of God be manifested in your lives. May you grow strong in spirit, mind, soul, and body. Be healthy physically, healthy emotionally, healthy spiritually and mentally. May the Lord give you the ability to prosper in all of your ways and grow strong in the Lord. And the Lord bless each one of you now and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord let the light of his countenance on you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lincoln. Uh, gracious God, the mic. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and pray, and then we'll close. Lord, we love you. We honor you. Thank you for the opportunity today to be here in your presence. Lord, we just do bless your people with life and grace and peace. Lord, thank you that you are with us. Bless them now. Let us have a great week, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you so much. Have a wonderful week.